a row. Great interest among the fans. A full house assembled at Celtic Park, while on the other side of Glasgow, every ticket was snapped up by Rangers supporters desperate to see the action on big screens. Both sets of fans knew this game had the potential to kill off the champions' title challenge. A Rangers victory would have opened up a 13-point advantage over their greatest rivals. The pressure then was intense, particularly on Celtic. And it must have come almost as a relief to all the players when the talking stopped and they could finally get on with playing the game. The commentator is Rob McLean. Three changes for Celtic. Alan Stubbs is back after injury and yesterday's birth of his second child. Swedish signing Johan Mjalby's first game for Celtic couldn't be much bigger. And Paul Lambert is available again after suspension. Jackie McNamara is injured again, joining Gould, Reaper and Burley as notable absentees. Mjalby and Stubbs will team up together for the first time in central defence in front of on loan Tony Warner. Mira Ritha starts on the right side of midfield with Simon Donnelly offering support to a new look attack with Lubo Moravchik replacing Mark Burchill up alongside Henrik Larsson. Johan Mialbi is a Swedish international teammate of Larsson's. He's been capped eight times and has just pocketed a league championship winner's medal in Sweden. The owner of a World Cup winner's medal makes his first start for Rangers. French international striker Stefan Givars has already scored twice for his new club. Givars for Jonathan Johansson is the only change in the Rangers starting lineup. Skipper Lorenzo Amoriso is still suspended. 21 year old Scott Wilson continues in central defence. Arthur Newman takes the captain's armband. Comeback man Gordon Jury is on the bench. As ever, Dick Advocat sends out Rangers in a strict 4 4 2. Antti Niemi keeps the goalkeeper's jersey with Andreas Kopka's proposed move and the column through. For Rangers, it's a busy week with the old firm match followed by Parma and the League Cup final. Refereeing his second old firm match is Willie Young. The second old firm match of the season gets underway and massive interest in this. 60,000 packed inside Celtic Park. More than 30,000 watching across the city, the Ibrox, as these BBC Scotland pictures are beamed back. The world is watching as well. Eight million worldwide watching this match. As Antti Yemi gets his first touch of the ball. Viewers in North America, Australia, and across Europe. And Sweden, Poland, Holland, and France. A match to capture the public imagination. And that's an early touch for Scott Wilson. Big day for him at the hearts of the Rangers' defence. Already some notes being taken by Bert van Lingen, number two, alongside the number one, Dick Advocat. Boyd for Monarchic. Loses out to Van Bronckhorst. Long ball for Rod Wallace. Looking for support, Konchelskis is coming up. Here he is. Shaping for the shot, and it came off Mahi. A scorer last weekend against Aberdeen, Kanchelskis. This was a good break from Rangers. Wallace found by the long ball from Van Bronckhorst. He then set up Kanchelskis for the shot at goal. It's a good ball out for Simon Donnelly. Here's Moravchik. Reset, racing away down the touchline. Intercepted by Arthur Newman. He sets flick. Was that an arm used by Henrik Larsson? It's squeezed through for reset. Saved by Niemi, but the flag is up. Offside against Vidar, reset. The Rangers supporters were screaming for handball there against Henrik Larsson as he controlled the ball. Offside against reset. Tom Boyd. Scott Wilson looked at his arms round Henrik Larson there, and in fact a free kick has been given. And that looked as if Willie Young got it absolutely right. The arms of Wilson locked round the neck of Larson. Still managed to get a header, but definitely a free kick. Five in front of Antiniemi, and there's the discussion. Larson and Alan Stubbs and Paul Lambert all involved. 
Phil O'Donnell is the Celtic player on the wall. That's from Larson. Too high for Simon Donnelly. They thought long and hard about it, Celtic. But this was a disappointing conclusion. The Alberts flick. Givars. Great strength there from Yalbi. And Henrik Larson away from Colin Henry. Phil O'Donnell was sprinting through the middle. That's well won by Konchelskis. Now Ferguson. That's for Rod Wallace. Rod Wallace has got a half yard on Alan Stubbs, taking a tumble. An optimistic look towards Willie Young. No penalty. And coolly played out by Stubbs to O'Donnell. It's a good one by Simon Donnelly. In for Henrik Larsson, and we're off to it! His first goal for Celtic! 12 minutes gone, and Joshua Fenglas, his fellow Slovakian, leads the applause. A superb finish, and Celtic's decision to push Monovcic up front pays dividends. The left foot shot was perfectly timed and perfectly placed and curled away from Niemi. He threw himself towards it, but he had no chance of keeping this out. A quick break, clever play from Larson with the dummy and the clinical finish from Moravchik. And that was the reaction on the Celtic bench. 1-0. to Newman, Givarsh, off for Newman again, promising for Rangers, good hit from Newman, it came back off Alan Stubbs, and determined in the tackle there was Vidar Reset. In from Albert, is Givarsh, not happy with the challenge from Stubbs, face-to-face -face confrontation between the referee and Stubbs and a yellow card. Everyone behind the ball for Celtic. Reset, Lambert, Mahe, Larson, all in the wall, Phil O'Donnell joining it. Uh, Luba Moravchik is there as well. George Alberts with his foot in the ball and behind him, Giovanni van Bronckhorst and Stefan Givars. Looks like he might fancy a crack at goal here. Here's Givas, well hit, and a good save by Tony Warner. Only his second game for Celtic, his first experience of this high-octane atmosphere, and good quick reactions. Givas did well to get the shot through, it bounced in front of Warner, and he did so well to keep full concentration. Ferguson is deflected and the shot too high from Givas he was off balance as he hit it and that one never looked likely to hit the target this was troublesome for Celtic because of the deflection but it was always hitting too high neat touch from Rod Wallace onto it in the flash was Alberts good control of the ball and Brockhorst poor pass Reset, that's dangerous. Barry Ferguson, good vision. Here's Konchelskis, this could be a chance for the equaliser. Saved by Warner. Celtic played themselves into bother there, the loose pass from Reset started this. And good pace from Konchelskis, but he took it to too tight an angle. over by Wilson, free kick Luba Moravchik wanted to take that quickly there were too many bodies around him it's given away by Simon Donnelly tidied up by Alan Stubbs good 
challenge by Moravchik. Well, he's endeared himself to the Celtic supporters, and there's a man who's not too happy. The Kadvika selling to be restrained by John Robottom. Rod Wallace away from Tom Boyd. A good break. And an effort which bounced just wide. Celtic know the danger of Rod Wallace when he's given some room. Long range effort, swerved away. A fraction off target. Looking for goal number 14 of the season. There's Full House, Celtic Park. And already this match, highly intriguing. Barry Ferguson won that well. Paul Lambert got back to make the tackle. Newman and Van Bronckhorst trying to link up as they do generally with such great effect down the left-hand side. Long ball from Henry. Here's Kamchelskis, trying to get the better of Mahi. It was two against one, Philadelphia helping out Mahi. Now Lambert. Good touch from Moravchik, and that's a rush challenge by Scott Wilson. That's a yellow card. It's a red card. Scott Wilson is sent off. It was certainly wild. Tackle from behind. Moravchik needing attention. And Rangers down to ten men. So, Scott Wilson's first experience of the old firm fixture ends after 21 minutes. And I'm sure he'll look back with a lot of regrets on that tackle. I don't think this tackle gets any better from which angle you view it. Not running too freely, Luba Moravchik, but he's OK to continue. And the impassioned face of the Kavlikat will hide some strong feelings, I'm sure. Through from Alberts, left by Stubbs. Good confidence in his goalkeeper. He knew Tony Warner was coming out, left it to him. This is what Celtic have been missing in central defence, a bit of assurance. He's only refereed this famous fixture once before, and already in this one, steeped in controversy, although one would have to back him for that red card decision. to Mahi, O'Donnell wanted it, cleared by Colin Henry. Here's Manavchik on the half volley, Henry Lawson was close, nodded over the crossbar by Arthur Newman. Quality ball played in there by Moravchik. He's having a superb match on the half volley. Well, that was really dangerous for Rangers. It's Moravchik on the corner kick. Yalbi was close, and Sergio Parini made the clearance. Celtic on top. One goal up. Eleven men against ten. Stops for reset. Got a head flick. Henry had to play it. Henrik Larsson with some very happy Celtic supporters in the background. And Sergio Perini is the marker. 
concentration on the face of Antiniemi. Lambert for Boyd. The cross was too long. Chased by Moravchik. That's good skill. The pass for O'Donnell. Here's Mahi. Now Lambert. Well, Paul Lambert has already got that old firm cracker stashed away in his collection from last season. This very reminiscent. And it wasn't too far away. He struck it very well. And it just soared over the crossbar. Well won the header by Mialbi. Back from Perini. Maravchik again, doing so well. That's for Simon Donnelly. Well read by Colin Hendry, who was surely fouled. Free kick given. Hendry did well, he was caught by Simon Donnelly. But look at the quality in the pass here from Maravchik. Well, he's had 26 minutes to remember so far in this old firm match. Lubo Moravchik, absolutely superb. Talbot. Rob Wallace is his only option. Cut out by Mialbi. Lubo Moravchik again. Gets it back from Phil O'Donnell. You can almost feel the confidence surging through Celtic at the moment. Again, it's Moravchik making the play. Confusion between Reset and Larson. Phil O'Donnell wants it, he's made a good run. Konchelskis was back with him. The flag up. And two VIP spectators there, the Newcastle strike pairing of Alan Shearer and Paul Dalgleish. It back from reset. Play on. Well, it looks as if well, Young is motioning for the game to continue. Now he's given a free kick to Rangers. Initially, he said play on when Paul Lambert was tripped. At this point, when Lambert pushed the ball beyond Albert and looked to be caught by the trailing leg, no free kick given there. But at this point, the free kick was given to Rangers. And Brockhorst on the free kick. And almost a chance for Stefan Givas right on the six-yard line. I think he was surprised that this free kick found its way through to him. But he prodded it wide. Angled ball from reset, headed away by Konchelskis. Barry Ferguson. Mialbi, Givash. Simon Donnelly battling to get the ball under control. Henrik Larsson. Rangers could be in trouble here, but Afchik in for Larsson. And there was some good defending there from Giovanni van Bronckhorst. He got back so well. And as Moravchik played the ball in, look at the challenge there from Van Bronckhorst. That made sure the header didn't really carry much sting, and Yemi was able to save. Henrik Larsson. So O'Donnell can leave it to Luba Moravchik. O'Donnell again, early ball in, Larsson! What a chance that was for number two for Celtic. With two and a half minutes of the first half left, what a good run, good ball in from Phil O'Donnell, played on the run, and Henrik Larsson knows that he might well have made it 12 for the season here. He's put away more difficult chances than this, timed the run well, but didn't force Nietzsche into a save. Boyd, Yavi, Ravchik, Celtic moving it around nicely. Phil O'Donnell is up ahead, Henrik Larsson, Simon Donnelly getting there, he got a reset as well. And that's a disappointing 
delivery from Moravchuk this time. Asking no great questions of the Rangers' defence. And there is the man of the moment. There is the man of the first there half, Lubo Moravchuk, the Slovakian, whose goal separates these sides. And there's a man who's being strongly questioned there by the Rangers captain Arthur Newman clearly still unhappy about the sending off of Scott Wilson in this action-packed first half the first goal, the only goal so far after 12 minutes Simon Donnelly played it across it was dummied by Henrik Larsson and it was beautifully tucked away by Lubo Moravchik his first goal for Celtic in this famous old firm fixture also experiencing it for the first time Scott Wilson and that tackle on Moravchik earned him a red card so these Celtic fans are happy their team one up Rangers down to ten men a different scene altogether at Ibrox as the Rangers supporters watch on big screens and they don't have much to cheer about so far half time at Celtic Park Celtic one Rangers nil Celtic restart the match, highly encouraged by what happened in the first half. Rangers have lost only twice this season. Celtic threatening to inflict number three. Here's Phil O'Donnell, it's a good start for him in the second half. Very prominent in the first as well, he's having a good game, O'Donnell. And he has it again back from Moravchik. Moravchik to Boyd, Larson away from Torini, held up by Givash. Promises to be a tough second half for Rangers, with Celtic having the numerical advantage. Ferguson stretching out to get his book to that. Foul by Rod Wallace. Pulled down by Phil O'Donnell. And then the high boot from the Rangers striker. Donnelly to Boyd. Simon Donnelly goes again looking for the ball back. In for resets. Cleared by Perini. It's well won by Alan Stops. Top point is onside. Number two for Moravchik. Four minutes of the second half gone. This so far match is turning into an unbelievable dream for Luba Moravchik. Picked out by Boyd, and how good was that header? Antiniemi was rooted to the spot because it was so far away from him into the corner Tom Boyd picked out by that superb pass by Alan Stubbs pulled it back and no marking on Moravchik Celtic two up and yet again Joe Venglos is out of the dugout Leading the songs of praise for Lubo Moravchik. was a good chance to make it number three set up by O'Donnell steered the shot but steered it wide pass from Donnelly for Henrik Larsson it's number three this time and 
Celtic Park is bouncing. Seven minutes into the second half, and a three-goal lead for Celtic. Rangers are stunned. Henrik Larsson scores his 12th goal of the season. The deftest of flicks, putting the ball beyond Antiniemi. The angle pass from Simon Donnelly. Larsson had the pace to get away from Henry, and he had the composure to finish in some style. Six goals now for Larsson in his last four games. He's hot, and Celtic are hot. Three up in the Old Firm match. on Brockhorst, thought about the shot, pushed over by Alan Stobbs, he's protesting, he reckons it was a dive, but Willie Young has surely got this absolutely right, bundled over by Brockhorst, and Rangers have a chance from the set-piece, courtesy of that Stubbs foul, Stefan Givas thought about it and then left it, so it's George Albert stepping up, and Van Brockhorst! A superb strike from Giovanni van Bronckhorst pulls a goal back for Rangers. So within a minute of that Henrik Larsson goal for Celtic, Giovanni van Bronckhorst with this superb curling free kick in off the inside of the post. Gives Rangers some hope, it's a long way back now. Van Bronckhorst's fifth goal for Rangers. Stubbs. Well dealt with by Colin Henry. Tom Boyne's header falling for a video reset. One back by Arthur Newman. And Alan Stubbs is going to start a couple of yards from Stefan Gibars. George Albert's getting the better of Paul Lambert. Melvin Brockhorst. And cleared by the diving header of Johan Mjalby. Kept in by Stubbs. And Celtic on the move again. It's a foul by Hendry on Larson. And Hendry will be booked for that. Yellow card shown to Colin Hendry. Grim faced the Kadvika. And well, he might be. A long way back for his team. 3-1 down and it's 10 men against 11. He stops free kick, finding a good reset. Throw in. Just a yard from the corner flag. Tom Boyd's throw. run up at that, away from Newman, Tom Boyd has time, underneath it Andrei Kinchelskis, didn't get it clear though, in from Philadelphia and Henrik Larsson, two for Larsson, two for Moravchik, four for Celtic, 11 minutes now into the second half, an absolutely incredible old firm match, one goal in the first half already, another four inside 11 minutes of the second half. Phil O'Donnell's cross, Hendrik Larson not picked up. And the header was down and away from Niemi. And it's 4-1. Celtic now running away with this. Hendrik Larson's 13th goal of the season. And Joseph Venglos is jubilant. <laughs> the 
Celtic supporters taking full advantage of this situation. Their team 4-1 up, almost unbelievably. And they will milk the moment. A free kick for Celtic. Maravchik with the meat and the sandwich. Maravchik shots! Saved by Niemi, it was an awkward one, it bounced in front of him. He's strong on both feet, is Luba Maravchik. Great ability, as we've already seen, and testing out Niemi again. And Larson, through for Alan Stubbs. Cut out by Jury. O'Donnell, Paul Lambert is onside, what a chance that was for Vidar Reset to make it five, he knows it, just about onside when you look along the line, fired across goal and all he needed was the meanest of touches and that was surely in the back of the net. Now Barry Ferguson, Flipped on by Van Bronckhorst, a free kick. And worrying way for Rangers, Gordon Jury is hobbling his way towards the penalty box. He'll be hoping he can run it off. In fact, he gives the thumbs up to the dugout, which is encouraging. But for a moment, as if he was in trouble again. Rangers about to bring on Ian Ferguson. That means Barry Ferguson goes off. 29 minutes gone in the second half. The Celtic wall. Van Brockhorst. And immediately, attention will be needed. Stefan May will have felt that. That was right off the meat of the boot of Van Bronckhorst. Straight out the head of Stefan Mahe. There was immediate concern about Mahe, but he's okay. Corini and Hendry are up in the box when Brockhorst's corner kick. Now Givas! He got good contact, but he tugged it wide. Shrug of the shoulders. Gordon Jury was doing good work at the near post. Tony Warner. Threw himself across and was happy to see the Givar shot and going wide of target. <laughs> Celtic have a new hero, Lubo Maravchik, two goals in his first experience of the old fun match. And just listen to that reception. <laughs> Off he goes, and on in his place comes 18 year old Mark Burchill. Well, some agitation on the face there of Joseph Fengos wants to keep this top quality performance going. That was tight for Perini. Phil O'Donnell marks it in front of Mark Burchill. And Henrik Larsson was at the far post, hoping for a cross. It wasn't forthcoming because Mark Burchill fancied himself here to put the ball in the back of the net. It was always going to be difficult from this sort of angle, struck it well enough, but it was high and wide. Arthur Newman with Tony Vidmar racing up ahead of him. Well cut out by Lambert. And some room here for Henrik Larsson. Tom Boyd is getting up in support of him. Burchill is there as well, here's Mark Burchill! His first taste of the old firm match and his first goal. It's 5 1. Right on 90 minutes. Hendrik Larson carved up in the Rangers defence, released the pass at just the right time inside Borini. And what a good finish that was for a teenager. One for Burchill, two for Larson.
Robertson, two for Marovci, and it's 5-1 for Celtic. The final whistle can come any time now for Rangers, it's been a miserable afternoon for them. Here's Gordon Jury. And that just about sums it up for Rangers. That's full time. Celtic are back with a bang. Hendrik Larson, another five star performance from him. Two goals, taking a season's tally to 13. Joseph Benguas can permit himself some quiet satisfaction and maybe a private celebration as well because it's been an outstanding show from Celtic. The return of Alan Stubbs made a difference. The contribution of Henrik Larsson was as ever highly impressive. Tony Warner certainly enjoyed his first experience of the old firm match. He wasn't really too troubled apart from the free kick from Giovanni van Bronckhorst, which ended up behind him. But that was scant consolation for Rangers, watching the beam-back pictures at Ibrox. The Rangers fans have trudged homeward. Disconsolate, the honours go to Celtic, three Premier points. They narrow the margin between themselves and Rangers to seven, and they give themselves a real hope that they now can relaunch their title defence. An incredible scoreline at Celtic Park. Celtic 5, Rangers 1. Could this be an important result, not just because you beat Rangers and reduced the, the, the gap to seven points, but, but for the rest of the season it gives you a lift now? Yeah, I hope now that we shall make a continuity because we had a twice, three times possibility to go ahead with a better and better performance. But now I am believing to the players and they have believed in themselves, you know, that uh, we are able to go ahead with better and better performance. Would you class it an embarrassing defeat? No, not embarrassing. You, you lo when you lose with 11 people, uh, with 5 on then it's embarrassing. But uh, all the circumstances today, the away game and uh, the, their last chance, then this is not an embarrassing. This is disappointing lose, that's for sure, but not. Not embarrassing. You'll be hoping you don't suffer a negative reaction in preparation for the game against Parma on Tuesday. Well, it has nothing to do with the result for today because what well, they deserve to win. But it is for me still a little bit uh, strange that uh, before a European match that you have to play an old firm game, after a European match you have to play in the cup final. Scottish football, they want to be involved in European football. Then they have to know before they make the schedule uh, what's going to happen, what's happened now with us. Would or you? somebody else. Would you prefer the game to have been brought forward a couple of days? Well, they have to be aware of European League as well. So the SFA must address the situation very quickly? It has not, not, not only to do with, with the Rangers, it has to do with Celtic and Kilmarnock, that kind of thing. Phil, what's the reaction in the dressing room to that? Um, obviously players are delighted, you know, it was a convincing win for us, I thought we played very well. I think there was a lot of people who thought would, uh, our season would end today but we've um, proved them wrong and it's really now just starting for us. Did a lot of people writing you off actually help? Definitely, you know, everybody was putting us down all week, you know, in the press and in the media, so that lifted the players and um, lifted the manager and the whole, the whole group was all in it together today and I think it showed in the park. Henrik, are you surprised at how well that went? Yes, I am, uh, even though we had full confidence in our team, but uh, it went uh, quite smoothly today, I think. It went well with you and Moravček up front? Yeah, I don't think many people expected that from the start, but uh, it was a brilliant uh, move from the coach and uh, it paid off today. He scored two, I scored two and uh, yeah, we set up the other goal, so that's great. There's still a seven point gap between yourselves and Rangers, but does today make a big difference psychologically? No, as you say, seven points is a long way to go for us still. Uh, yeah, we just have to try to keep the performance on this level and then, uh, then we see what's happening in May.